uh, Chris or Linda for switching that on. And I'm going to just go ahead and introduce Susana Santos, and she's a midwife from Portugal. It gives me great pleasure to tell you about Susana. She started her education as a nurse practitioner and worked 10 years in an obstetric unit. Then in 2008, she became the mother of a beautiful baby girl and finished her education as a midwife. And she's been a midwife for eight years now and works in a local labour ward of a public maternity hospital. And she chose this unit because the midwives there advocate normal and natural childbirth practices. In addition to the hospital, she works independently, helping couples during pregnancy to prepare for natural, physiological and rewarding childbirth. She has experience in water birth and was the co-author of the first Portuguese study about water birth, which she presented in ICM at Prague in 2014. She's been a guest assistant at Lisbon High School of Nursing and Midwifery Department. And she's now doing her master's degree in midwifery and preparing her final thesis about the management of nuchal cords. So thank you, Susanna, and go ahead. Thank you, Susanna, and go ahead. Thank you very much, Jane. Sorry for the sound. And good afternoon for, to all of you. First, I want to wish you all a happy International Day of the Midwife. Let me tell you that it's a, a pleasure and a great honor to participate in this conference. I ask you please to be patient with me. English is not my first language. As Jane said, I'm a midwife that are 8 years old and work in obstetric units for uh, 17 years. Over the years, uh, I've become more and more interested in all around normal and physiological birth. A few years ago, uh, I was with a midwifery student talking about a birth uh, which we had attended. And she told me, Susanna, cut a nuchal cord is so difficult. There is no other way. I smiled and said, yes, there is. But we are going to have um, we are going to have to read, learn, and discuss a lot. As we discussed in the last presentation, we need to support our students, their fears, and their feelings. That time, I decided I was going to do something to change clinical practice. Since then, I have been looking for basis in scientific evidence, and have been trying to spread the word here in Portugal. What I bring to you today is a presentation of a literature review entitled Nuchal Cord at Birth, Evidence-Based uh, Practice. Sorry, I cannot, oh, okay, okay. The aims of my presentation are identify scientific articles that lead to the best uh, clinical practice of midwives around nuchal cords at, both, uh, at birth, and improve knowledge about cord clamping timing and different approaches to nuchal cords management. Also, infer about indications, advantages, and disadvantages of the various clinical approaches. And finally, promote individual reflection about um, clinical practice. Oh. On scientific evidence, uh, the importance and the benefits of delayed cord clamping are already widely proven. So why this study? Which is the better management for a nuchal cord? This is what I, I need to know, I needed to know. Nuchal cords are very common at birth, but nevertheless, very professionals continue to treat it uh, has an, an obstetric complication. In addition to clinical practice seems to be based on personal experience and in what is routine in their workplaces. So we need to create 
here in Portugal, we need to create guidelines for clinical practice. What did I know when I started this work? The principal aim of our assistance is a healthy mother and a healthy baby with the lowest interventional level. We need a valid reason for interfering in the natural and physiological process. By the other way, we know a uh, nuchal cord is defined as the presence of umbilical cord around baby's neck in one or more loops. Checking for a nuchal cord is a common obstetric intervention. Nuchal cords are usually associated to some kind of risk. However, given their high incidence and low number of adverse effects reported, it's difficult to define the concrete risk. In Portuguese education, um, the guideline is pulling loose uh, nuchal cords and clamp and cut the tie ones. Although this practice uh, continues to be described in books and guidelines, the current scientific evidence contradicts this, this practice and puts into question the, the theoretical, uh, theoretical content in which they are based. The high incidence is referred by most of the authors that I consulted. It's more frequent in male ba babies and some authors related these facts with the longer length of the cord in these babies, baby boys. They may form during pregnancy or during labor. Some authors put this possibility because the incident is smallest in elective C-sections. Nuchal cords are in fact related to changes in um, baby's heart rate but in most situations, this is physiolog physiological, not pathological. For all of this, I decided to study more deeply uh, this subject. Then I conduced um, a, review, uh, a review of the latest, latest scientific articles on the subject. The scraps used were uh, nuchal cord, cord clamping, and somersault maneuver, as well as the Boolean operators and an arm. I used the BEYOND system from Lisbon High School of Nursing that includes uh, the databases Academic Search Complete, CINAL, uh, PubMed, Medline, Scopus, Cielo, Up to Date, and Web of Science. In the Cochrane databases of systematic reviews has been used the descriptor cord clamping. Were eligible articles available in full text published in the last five years in Portuguese, English, or Spanish? Electronic search was carried from October to November uh, from last year. As a result, um, we have uh, 16 articles um, were identified that respond to the criteria and that uh, are distributed as you can see in this slide. In the following, in the following slides, uh, meet the summary of the selective, selected articles. The studies are mostly from UK and United States. We have five from UK and three from U United States. And then we have uh, other countries as um, Thailand, uh, Iran, Pakistan. And I hope uh, in a near future we may have a Portuguese one too. Sorry. These are the last ones. After analyzing the 16 articles, what did I find? 
I found that time for court clamping is contested. Different authors defend different timings. On the other hand, and despite disadvantage, disadvantages, uh, early court clamping remains the most widely used practice. Cut the cord is a reasonable need, but clamping is controversial. Also, the reasons behind this controversial practice are complex. complex. The influence of the habit is hard to reverse, and it's difficult to change behavior, and it takes time. Lack of evidence-based knowledge about the advantages of uh, uh, delayed cord clamping. There are no specific national guidelines, and we need it. There are no precise def definitions about early cord clamping and physiological cord clamping. As I said, authors have different uh, opinions. And then we have cryopreservation of the umbilical cord blood. Cryopreservation involves early cord clamping and also implies by professionals during pregnancy the transmission of correct and truly information, information to the parents. In this photo, you can see <clears throat> a beautiful mom and her healthy baby who had the nuchal cord at birth. If you see, the cord is still uncut and white. In this slide is a resume of disadvantages of early cord clamping and the advantages of delayed cord clamping, according to the authors. As disadvantages of early cord clamping, we have hypovolemia, bradycardia, hypoxia in terms and preterm babies, increase of an anemia in preterm and term newborns, increase of risk of interventricular hemorrhage, increase of uh, respiratory complications. By the other hand, as advantages of delayed cord clamping, we have a, that allows placenta transfusion in a 30 percent increase of blood volume to the baby. It increases hemoglobin levels, increase iron reserves, and ferritin levels up to six months, improves oxygen transport, and decrease the need for blood transfusion in premature babies, decrease the days of oxygen therapy in premature infants, and decrease also the need for assisted ventilation. Promotes skin-to-skin -skin contact and mother and child, and child relationship. Many good, many, many good reasons that justify changing the practice. Don't you agree? Delayed cord clamping is supported by many international organizations and that are referred and they are referred by the, the authors. We have the WHO, FIGO, ICM, Royal College of Midwives, and another international organizations. Placental transfusion is protective for the baby, especially in stressful situations or fetal distress, prevents hypovolemia and improves perfusion for all organs. I always, um, I found as well that, that uh, there is a lack of level one evidence of how nuchal cords should be conducted, but there is enough evidence about how they should not be conducted. This is a great challenge for all of us. Cord clamping uh, is not a physiological need. It's an obstet obstetric intervention. The cord vessels will collapse. Remember the picture, the picture that I uh, put and we saw, wait for white. Guidelines on the clinical practice need to be improved in order to prevent unnecessary interventions. So, and maybe this is the most um, important slide of my whole presentation. 
it's about how should we act. Recommendations according to the authors and scientific evidence are to avoid early cord clamping, to avoid nuchal cord clamping. Many authors uh, defend that pulling loose uh, nuchal cords is the simpler solution. And many of them also defend that somersault maneuvers to tie ones or in cases of multiple nuchal cords. In somersault maneuver, midwife gently supports the occipital of the baby's head, driving it to the inner side of mom's leg while the mother is pushing. No extraction maneuvers are needed, just a gentle support. The head and the neck of the baby remains near the perineum. It's a simple maneuver, gentle bending of the head which promotes flexing of the baby's body and his birth. At this time, nuchal cords uh, comes off with ease. In water births, babies do this alone, freeing itself from the cord. By doing this, we can have the possibility to delay cord clamping and the cord intact if reanimation is required. So, what can we do for change the practice? Literature reviews are very important. If you, we have knowledge based on scientific evidence, we will feel more secure to change the practice. We will have more inner resources to fight with our fears. Discussions about evidence uh, like this one today we have to share knowledge, experiences, difficulties, and success. And finally, we need education, simulated practice, and training. And what were my conclusions? Delayed cord clamping is beneficial for the newborn, and it's recommended. Recommending management of nuchal cords is the one that avoids compression of the umbilical cord associated with clamp and, cut and cutting. Pulling nuchal uh, cords is a simple, uh, simpler management. However, it's only safe in the presence of a wide nuchal cord and involves manipulation of the cords. In the presence of a a tie or multiple nuchal cords, the clinical decision must, must rest on the somersault maneuver. These were my big conclusions. I am now ending my presentation. Thank but you, finally, Susanna. Uh, Thank you, Susanna. Uh, but finally, I, I need to make a very special thanks to Amanda Burley midwife of the year in um, 2014 uh, in UK. I am very grateful for all your sharing knowledge, becoming an inspiration, but also for all support you have gave me. Thanks, Amanda. And these are my references. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, here are my email contacts if you need something. This photo behind is from my beautiful city, Setúbal, very close to Lisbon, in, case, in the case you want to come here. Once again, thank you for this opportunity and sorry about my English and the sound. Uh, now I will be happy to hear your questions or comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susanna, and I think your English is a hundred times better than my Portuguese. <laughs> okay, but you are not doing a presentation in Portuguese. <laughs> so I'm going to relate to you some questions. Okay. Can you speak to, there's a question about giving oxytocin um, prior to when the cord's still intact and attached to the baby. 
Sorry? The oxytocin, the oxytocin to the mother. To the mother. When, you give, when you give, when you have, when you have active, active management, management on the third stage, stage. And, and then, then you then still have the baby attached, attached. Do, you do you think there's a risk of exposure of oxytocin? oxytocin? Yes, I can. I can understand the question. The question and the thank you. This is a common question uh, here in Portugal. We don't um, administrate oxytocin with the, the baby and the cord intact. But if you if you need an active management here in Portugal, we cut the cords. But if you are uh, promoting delayed cord clamping, skin to skin contact. Um, bonding from the mother, you will uh, have breastfeeding um, uh, earlier and uh, um, oxytocin from the mother. Okay, and then there was another question. Uh, I think it was about taking cord gases. Yes, so it's possible. Do you ever take gases? Yes, no. Here in my unit, we don't take, but it's possible. The, the, um, the needle is very, um, how can I say, S a small one, and we can, um, you can have uh, gases. In a, in a hospital near Setubal, um, another hospital, uh, it's, uh, this is practice. And in my um, next research, I want to in, include this, uh, this data about gases uh, to, to prove that uh, uh, this is safe. That's, That's great. great. And um, Kerry is saying she took part in a study day about water birth. Yes. And they discussed taking blood for rhesus analysis with the cord intact. Um, and I'm guessing, she's guessing that ga blood, gases, blood gases would be the same. Uh, in my experience with water birth, as I told you, we here we don't take uh, samples to, to gases, but I think it's possible, yes. Well, that's great. Um, does anyone want to put their hand up to us, ask a question? I wanted to ask Susanna whether it's normal practice to um, check for the cord but before the baby's head is well, after the baby's head is born, before the body is born. Yes, uh, um, checking for the cord is um, is, in, is uh, an obstetric intervention. Also, um, it's not needed. We don't need it. I I can tell you how I became more experienced with the uh, summer soul maneuver. In the beginning, I need to um, uh, read a lot. I, I saw movies about summer soul maneuver, and one thing I, um, one thing I did was uh, uh, trying to apply the maneuver in all uh, nuchal cords, just not the Thai ones. So I um, I became, um, how can I say, um, it's a habit. I don't check for nuchal cords. And then there's another question here from. And then there's another question here from. Charlotte saying that her. Um, Charlotte saying that her practice in Germany changed, or sorry, Denmark, um, sorry, Denmark. Um, she said three years ago they were able to yeah. change the from procedure taking blood, um, from taking they blood, um, while the, they were able to take them while the cord is still attached. Why? I, I, I think I cannot understand the question. Okay, so, Char okay, so Charlotte was saying that the, the, her process, process changed, changed three years ago. Yes. I cannot hear you. So, so that they are, they are able, able to take, take cord gases, gases and hello? hello? I can't hear you. Right, right after. after. Sorry. Can, can anyone hear me? Yes, hello? I can hear you. Can hear me? Both. I can hear you both. 
Although something obviously happened because the um, screen has just gone blank. So maybe if we give it a minute, everything will settle back down again. Can I, can I speak? Susanna? Yes, yes. Can I speak? Yes, you can yes, speak. Yes, okay. I, I don't understand the yes, question. Yes, please speak. Uh, uh, I don't understand the question because I can't hear. Can you, can you read the question in the text box? It's in the text box, dear. Yeah. Oh, okay. I seem uh, I'm. So I think Charlotte's point, Susanna. I think Charlotte's point is that you can do gases. Yes, we can do we can do gases. We don't we don't do it, uh, in my hospital because it's not a common practice here. But we can. I know that we can do. In the other hospital near Lisbon, they are doing uh, gases in um, in all babies, uh, all ones. Uh, so I think there is there that I'm going to to make my study. That is very exciting. Um, we're very excited to hear that, and we look forward to hearing about it next year. Yes, maybe anyone in the audience interested in a multicentral study? Um, well, we actually in Florida and the USA we already do um, a lot of delayed cord clamping in the hospital. And and what about nuchal cords? Um, yeah, we usually uh, leave them. We usually don't check for them or, or cut them. Yes, great. Here in Portugal, um, it's the common practice, uh, cordon club. Yes. And I have to um, to fight for my my position in my in my hospital, and I have to lead with. Um, um, some questions like uh, why are are you doing it, uh, Susanna? Uh, the baby is in a lower position than the mother, or um, any any kind of questions. I don't know what is your. Uh, um, well, I can send you. I actually published, um, Susanna. Sorry. Um, I published I published a, a paper last year or 2014 on delayed cord clamping. See, okay. yes, yes. So I will send you that. Thank you. I don't and know you, what you can tell your obstetricians that um, actual actually cut cut the cord. Not just obstetricians, also pediatricians. I'm not. I'm not hearing you, Jane. That's because you turned the sound off. Sorry, so it's wasn't just with the echo. echo. Sorry, it's just with the echo. So, Susanna, if you give Jane a chance to finish the question, you, because there's a delay, you see, and it's really quite strange. Okay. So what you need to tell your colleagues so is that actually cutting the cord early cutting the cord early that is an intervention. It is not an intervention to leave the cord alone. It is an intervention. Yes. Yes, some of my colleagues uh, are now in um, doing some cell maneuvre and uh, not cutting the cord, but uh, not of all of them. 
And uh, another aspect that I think it's very important it's the, um, the what the, uh, women think uh, about this. I don't know what is your experience, but um, here in Portugal, sometimes, many times indeed, we have birth plans with uh, um, when the women uh, say. Um, that they want delayed cord clamping, but also cryopreservation preservation uh, of the cord blood. So I think we need here um, it's improve information uh, for the women. Katie, if you could go to the top Katie, of the toolbar to and the top of the toolbar. And look at the speaker. And, and then to the right of that, there's a microphone. And then to the right of that, there's a microphone. And you click on that. And you, click and you can on click that. on that, and it should go green, so you can hear you. And you can click on that, and it should go green, so you can hear you. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Oh, good. Oh, oh yeah. sorry. Um, Go ahead. If you can hear me, my question is um, whether or not in her research she has discovered or, or seen any research on the connection between a decrease in maternal hemorrhage with delayed clamping until after the placental delivery, or whether that's even been studied. Jane, I think this question is for you. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it was for you. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, no, that what, was if you have an opinion. The, the research. What, if you have an opinion. No, in, in my in the articles that I reviewed, there are no, no nothing about uh, emergency. No increase. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to note that I read the I Royal College of Obstetrician and Gynecologists. The Royal College of Obstetrician and Gynecologists. And it was their opinion, but they claimed that there was it's research to demonstrate that. that <laughs> that's not me. There was increased bleeding um, if you uh, are delayed, uh, delayed cord clamping. If you are delayed cord clamping. But yes, I, uh, I, I wrote that. that. Um, yes, yes, I wrote, but I, I don't know. Um, maybe just uh, their opinion, because in the evidence, I, I don't see anything. Rachel are um, asking if it's possible to create preservation with delayed cord clamping. Um, some of the, um, the, what can I say, the, um, the, the, the cord, uh, the um, cord banks, uh, defense there it's possible, but, uh, the, the volume of, of blood to, um, to preserve, it's very, 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 very lower. And we're just waiting for a few more questions here. We're just waiting for a few more questions here. So Katie just wants to know so if there's Katie research about decrease in bleeding. Research. When waiting to cut until no, after I the have not found I have no, I, I don't uh, read uh, and I have not found the data about this, but um, in my practice, um, it's a normal uh, volume of blood.
And it sounds like our colleagues um, have some interesting studies. Charlotte is saying that there's a Nordic study which might give details. Okay. And Holly, Holly is saying that with she's a and she's observed that with physiological third stage, that women have a heavier blood loss immediately, but less throughout yes, the next day. Yes, I think all of us uh, have uh, have read something about uh, the increase of blood loss, but what I think. Um, it's that maybe the position of the women can be influenced in this uh, in this fact because um, the volume of blood of blood don't seems to me to be higher. Uh, it seems to be uh, all. Um, how can I say? Um, when the women is uh, in a vertical position, more blood at the same time, not uh, more blood at all. I think I, I want to know if I can make me understandable. No, we understand, no, we understand I, I believe, and, and I think that's concurring with what Seal Jevitt just posted. Just posted. Sorry, Jane. She uh, says uh, that in her, um, in her unit, delayed cord, cord clamping is the norm. Okay. In my unit, and the in main, my the main blood loss uh, for, all uh, for all women was 300 cc. Okay, okay. I agree. Good news. <laughs> and uh, um, anyone? So I think we've all uh, found this really stimulating. Yes. I, I want to, um, to ask if um, any of you have um, experiences like mine here with the, um, the resistance of uh, professional, other professionals and colleagues. Okay. <laughs> I would say that resistance is kind of normal, Susanna. Nobody likes change, do they? So you have to present a really good case and work slowly, and eventually yeah. other people will be yeah. persuaded. Uh, um, and I think yes, the midwives, not just, not yes, just yes, the uh, With our colleagues, too. But um, with the, with the, the time, um, I think um, some of them think uh, that uh, it's a good practice, and some of them are also doing it. But the others, um, I don't. I, I think they don't recognize the importance. Sometimes it's difficult, but uh, we can do it. Well, that's right. I hope in ten years, well, that's right. I hope in ten years we're not. We're just presenting that delayed cord clamping is <laughs> the norm. <laughs> And no, no, no checking for new yes. cords. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Susanna. I'm sorry about the echoing um, sound there. I think we'll all be coming to visit you in your beautiful um, city okay, here in Okay, I'm Portugal. waiting. Good. And I'll be sending you my, um, my uh, publication as well, and I think Sorry, Jane. I can't I hear you. I think well. Charlotte can send hers okay, as well. That okay, okay. It will be great. And thank you very much for this opportunity.
Thank you, and you did, thank you, and you did fantastic. fantastic. It was a great presentation. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so if somebody um, would like to turn off the record button for me, I really would appreciate that.